Done. All right. Should we move on? Dare I attempt another one? I like this little, little train going by here. It's getting very colorful. Uh, day 14. One time pad. Let's see what this is. In order to communicate securely with Santa while you're on this mission, you've been using a one-time pad that you generate using a pre-agreed algorithm. Okay. Unfortunately, you've run out of keys for in your one-time pad, and so you need to generate some more. To generate keys, you first get a stream of random data by taking MD5. Okay. We're doing MD5 again. I think it's already my cargo tomel. Uh, Pre-range salt, your puzzle input, and an increasing integer index starting with zero, represented in decimal. The resulting MD5 hash should be re represented as a string of lowercase hexadecimal digits. However, not all of these MD5 hashes are keys, and you need 64 new keys for your one-time pad. Okay, a hash is a key only if it contains three of the same character in a row, like 777, only consider the first such triplet in a hash. One of the next thousand hashes in the stream contains that same character five times in a row, like 77777. Considering future hashes for five of a kind sequence does not cause those hashes to be skipped. Instead, regardless of whether the current hash is a key, always resume testing for keys starting with the very next hash. What does that mean? does not cause those hashes to be skipped. Oh, okay, so if we're on like hash 20, we're gonna look for, for the next, what was it, thousand hashes. So we're gonna look from 21 to 1,020 for the triplet, but we still use 21 for the next hash that we, we, we're trying to consider. And then if 21 has a triplet, then we'll look at uh, 22 through 1,021. I got it. And so the idea here then is we don't want to have to recalculate these hashes all the time. Um, I guess what we could do is keep a vec deck of the 1,000 hashes. We start off with a thousand hashes and then we just pop one off the front. And every time we pop one off the front, we push a new one on the back and then we, we have the list to, to scan through. For example, if the prearranged salt is ABC, the first index which produces a triple is 18 because the MD5 hash of ABC 18 contains these three eights. However, index 18 does not count as a key because none of the next thousand hashes, 19 through 1018, contain five eights in a row. The next index which produces a triple is 39. It contains EEE, -E -E, and also the first key, because one of the next thousand, the one at index 816, contains five E's. All right, let's see if we can do this part. We'll test it out, uh, and it looks like this is another one where the puzzle input is um, not given as a separate file. So let's see what we got. Um, 14, 14, oops, 14, 14, 14. All right, create the module, 2016, day 14, and then we should get an unsolved over here. Perfect. So um, let's use the key. Um, should, what should we call it? It's just pad, struct pad, and we'll give it a uh, assault. It's called assault. Uh, string, uh, impl, pad, fn new. Salt string self salt Oh, I forgot the self salt. Alright. Oh uh, yeah, we're just getting warnings that we're not doing it. 
Um, so part one. So the first thing we want to do is generate a thousand. Let's create a vec deck. Vec DQ. Can I spell it right? And we'll push a thousand. Um, entries onto this thing. So we say, uh, let's create it first. <laughs> Let list is equal to vec deck new. And we'll say list.push back. Um, we care about what the index is, right? So what are we storing on this thing? We're going to say format bang. Your net what format bang and it'll be the key which is going to be self dot sorry the salt followed by i right and then this will be self salt oh but we, we have to do the md5 computation um how do we do that again RG MD5 colon colon. We do compute MD5 compute. Okay. And then our next next hash is it going to equal to 1001? Oh, no, no, it'll be equal to 1,000 because this goes to from 0 to 999. Okay. So our loop is going to be... Um, how many do we want to do? Let's do like the first five and see if we see these because there's two of them, right? It's a 39 and the 92. So those are the two that they're showing us. Eventually index 22728 meets all of the criteria to generate the 64th. Okay. So let's just print them, print out all 64. We can say while uh, count is less than 64. Um, and then we can d determine whether or not something is a hash. How do we do that? We have to pop it off pop our first thing off the top and then look at the next one. But whenever we pop off the front, we want to push back a new one. And that's where this next hash comes into play. So we say let current hash is equal to list.pop front. Um, and that, that's an option digest, unwrap. Oh, we're, we need to look at the ASCII representation. So we want to actually push format bang. Um, I think it's colon X for hexadecimal. I think. Yeah, let's comment this out for now. Uh, I just want to see if that actually looks right for um, in 0.10, say, println. Uh, this list of i. Can I do that? Doesn't like something. Unknown field. Self salt. Unknown. Oh, because I put it in pad. Let's put it in self. There's no reason to have it separate, right? Salt to string. And we can just initialize it here. And we just say self salt is equal to ABC. And then we can get rid of this pad business. To string. Okay, so now we can look at the first 10 here and we see them. And yeah, and they are the hexadecimal digits. Um, one of the things that bugs me about this bacon thing is it cuts off the bottom. That's all right. So we can look to see, oh, we can't look to see the first one that produces a triple. All right. 
But we are getting the hexadecimal representation there, which is what I was looking for. Um, let's go here, and now we need to figure out. So now current should, yeah, it's a string. So now we can look to see, is it the string we're looking for? Oh, before we do that, we need to push the new one. Let's list up, push back, format bang, colon x, md5 compute, format bang, uh, next hash, self salt. And then we say next hash plus equals one. All right, because that'll be, that'll always increment. This will always pop. Okay, very good. So now, what do we do next? We have to look to look in the string to see if we can find a triple. Uh, how do we do that? Um, we say for C in cur chars, maybe CH. Yeah, and it's a char. So now we're going to look to see if, ch is equal to the last char. Uh, let mot last char is equal to something that won't exist in there, which is, I guess, asterisk is good enough. And then we can say let mot triple equals zero. Um, then triple plus equals one. If triple equals three, then we're done. We found it and it's going to be stored in last char. Uh, otherwise, if it's not equal to it, then we're going to say last char is equal to ch and triple gets set to one. All right, we start, start back at the beginning again. Um, and then here we say if last char is not equal to star. Oh, no, if triple equals three. Then we found the last character. So if triple is not equal to three, we can just say continue, right? And that'll pop the next one off, push the new one on, and then look for a triple. Okay, so now we're at the point where we actually have in last char is a triple. Now we need to find somewhere in the next thousand. And we can just iterate the list for L in list. Now we need to find a quintuple of last char. So let mot quintuple zero for C in um, L chars. I do ch again, and it's a char. If ch is equal to last char, quintuple equals uh, plus equals one. If quintuple is equal to five, then we found uh, then we found one. So we want to break out of this one. Outer. Break outer. And then quintuple O. I guess we can save it this way. Quintuple equals zero here. We need to set it, I guess, to something here, and then we have to reset it here at the end of the loop. Um, and then, yeah. And then once we're done here, we can look. You can say if um, quintuple is equal to five, then we found an entry and we know, oh, we found an entry in the next thousand that has a five in it, but we need to return the index of the current guy. And we kind of know it, right? We have next hash. Next hash starts at a thousand. When we pop zero off, it'll be a thousand and one. So if we subtract a thousand and one from next hash, that'll be the first index that has a. So we can just say printlin found at 
index that next hash minus 1001. That's a little awkward, but that's fine. And then count plus equals 1, because we're looping over count to 64. Um, so the first two should be 39 and 92. And then the last one should be 22728. And I'm nervous about just running this in bacon because if it runs forever, it'll. So let's just save it. Let's see what blows up. Let's quintuple. And then we can say cargo run. All right, so I don't think it's working. 1839 is correct. But then it found the 64th one at index 720. Oh no, 18 does not count. Am I doing this wrong here? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot to set uh, quintuple back to zero. Okay. 18, 39 were wrong. 39 is right. Okay, that's better. Um, 22, 7, 28. So that matches. So this that's what the test input. Um, all we need to do is save the last one for the output here. What index produces your 64th one-time pad key? Right. So we only have to, we only care about the last one. So we can say let my uh, last index equals zero. And down here we can just say Oh, we don't even have to do that because once we found the last one, we're at next hash minus a thousand. So we can just say next hash minus a thousand and one. Let's let's before I change the salt, let's make sure that that actually prints out twenty two seven twenty eight. Um, let's go back to bacon. I think we can do it now in bacon. Yeah, okay, so it does print out the correct value there. So now we don't need to print these guys out. And we do need to give it the correct salt, which is whatever this is. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. Let's try rerunning it. it takes a little while. 18626. Yay! Okay, right answer. Um, let's go with Clippy here and see if Clippy's happy. Good. Git status. Git add source. Git commit dash m. 2016. Day 14. Part 1. Not bad. Okay, uh, I don't have it there, right? Okay, good. Um, yeah, it takes a little while to run. What if we, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna say bacon in it. And I'm gonna modify the bacon toml file, jobs run, there it is. And I'm gonna run this in release mode. still pretty slow oh it, it's probably compiling yeah it's still compiling oh okay so now it only took 127 milliseconds that's not bad okay so let's take a look at what part two is part two is of course in order to make this process even more secure you've also implemented key stretching i'm just going to hover over that oh there is an actual article on wikipedia called key stretching huh Key stretching forces attackers to spend more time generating hashes. Unfortunately, it forces everyone else to spend more time too. To implement key stretching, whenever you generate a hash, before you use it, you first find the MD5 hash of that hash, then the MD5 hash of that hash, and so on for a total of 2016 additional hashings, because we're in 2016. Always use lowercase hexadecimal representations of hashes. For example, to find the stretch hash for zero, 
Unix 0 and salt ABC, blah, 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 blah. So the stretch half for index 0 in the situation is A107FF. In the end, you find the original hash, one use of MD5, then find the hash of the previous hash 2016 times for a total 2017 uses of MD5. The rest of the process remains the same, but now the keys are entirely different. Again, for salt ABC, the first triple is 222 at index 5, no matching 222s in 1000, next 1000. Triple E at index 10 has a matching triple E. So index 10 would be the first key. And eventually it's 22551. Okay. Now that I implemented all the logic in part one, <laughs> let's not. What I'd like to be able to do is pass in a hashing function, right? I think that would be a little more, what's the word I'm looking for? Rusty? No. Um, you can pass in functions and then, so I can implement a 64th key finder uh, function, right? Let's put that down here. Uh, fn find 64th key uh, given a specific salt and a function which takes in the number of stretches. Oh, I, actually, that, that's what we can pass in, is we can just pass in stretch count. And it just returns the index, I guess as a u size, of the 64th key. And we can take all of this logic and move it down here. But now instead of doing this MD5 compute, we're going to do a stretch on the MD5 compute. So let's implement a stretch function, stretch. And it'll take it'll take a string to stretch, which is not the salt. It's the um, pre-range salt and increasing integer index, the resulting MD5 hash. Okay, so I don't know what what to call it then. Let's just we'll just call it uh, unhashed as a string and rounds as u size. And if rounds is zero, then we don't do anything. And then we pat, we return back the hashed string. So now we'll just say let mod hash is equal to md5. No, we start off with just format bang. Um, this colon x business. Let's just copy this. Let my hash is equal to this. Yep. So we take away one of those. And instead of this format bang thing, we'll just say unhashed. Like that. And now we're going to go for rounds for uh, something in zero dot dot rounds. And if rounds is zero, then this all gets skipped. We just say hash is equal to format bang. Um, the same colon x business uh, md5 compute of the previous hash with a double quote there. And then we just return the hash. Yeah, so if rounds is zero, then we just, we don't do anything here. And if rounds is the 2016, then we do it 2016 times. And now down here, instead of calling this, what we just call is, uh, oops, yeah, stretch on that, right? And the same thing here, we just call stretch. And then, that's too bad that this can't be all in one line. 
yeah, it keeps doing that. Okay. Um, oh, then self-salt self should cha just change to salt like that. Right, because we're going to pass it in like that. All right, does this build? Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so now we just need to call it. So we just say, oh, and it, this is what it needs to return. Right, and this is the, that's the while loop. So next hash minus a thousand and one. Right, so now for part one, we call find 64th key of this thing to a string. Um, what else broke? Something else broke. Oh, there. I missed a semicolon and then expected two arguments, right, because we got to pass in the fact that we're not doing any rounds. And now stretch doesn't work. Supplied one argument. Oh, yeah, because I need to pass in how many rounds. Stretch count. We need to do that here as well. Oh, we don't want to pass it. We don't want to do this, right? This is pa this is already returning the, the hexadecimal version of it. You may be missing a string literal format with. We don't want the string literal anymore. We just want to compute it. There we go. And does it give us the same answer? Um... 18.6.26, yeah. It just took a little while to comp uh, compile. Okay, so at least that's giving us the same number. So now I should be able to just do this, and instead of zero, we put in 2016. And this is gonna, this is gonna take forever because each one of these hashes has to be calculated 2016 times. So let's let this run for a while. And then we'll see the difference between 2016 hashes versus zero, I'm sorry, tw zero rounds versus 2016 rounds. Be nice to print out the intermediate ones for this one because it's a lot slower. I need to, uh, to queue up the Jeopardy music here. I guess what we could do is while this is running, we could say cargo clippy. Let's see if there's anything worth noting there. No, nope. it like that. This is slow. There it is. It came up with an answer two o o nine two, and it took forty one seconds to run. I don't know if there's anything you could do to make that any faster. That's the right answer. Well, thank goodness. <laughs> All right. Um, we no longer need this salt business. Um, oops. Too many things on my desk. Um, self just is this now. And then we don't need this anymore. Oh, now I have to rerun this. All right, I'm going to quit out of this and just make sure that that still compiles. And I'll just do that real quick um, while I'm checking this over. Okay, so I think I think this is pr pretty straightforward. Uh, all I did was refactor it. Uh, git status git commit dash am 2016 day 14 part two. All right. Now the big question is, do I have enough brain power to work on the next one while well, we're letting this one run here? Should I try it or should I just say, okay, that's that's my stream for today. Maybe I try one more. 
Come on. Okay. Yeah, let's try one more. I have time. 